And move. Assemblyman Lopez. Thank you, Chairman. Commissioner, uh, I give you credit for your perseverance and uh, very appreciative of your team's thoughtful leadership in my district. Uh, been very helpful in many ways. Thank uh, you. Three, you're welcome. Three, uh, three quick areas. Uh, on the dairy waste mitigation that you spoke of in your testimony, can, can you expand on a little bit? Tell me what you're envisioning there. Sorry, the, the, which the waste? Dairy, dairy waste. Dairy mitigation. waste, KFOs, yeah, right. Page so two. We, uh, after many years of work with uh, the ag community and in, in the environmental community as well, uh, we put out a, a general permit uh, this year for, for KFOs, and that's meant to provide some certainty as to the steps that need to be taken by a CAFO to reduce uh, discharges. Um, it's a sort of a, a rare uh, example of where you have all sides coming together and effectively coming up with, an, with a good permit and a good path forward um, to help. So that's step one, is the certainty. Step two is obviously helping them reach their goals. And um, through the EPF over the last few years and certainly moving forward, uh, we're going to be moving money out the door as quickly as possible to help farms reduce their overall uh, uh, impact to, uh, to streams. Um, we have uh, a very robust uh, ag non-point source uh, line that's been used uh, extensively for this. Uh, that grant program will continue. I work very closely with uh, Ag and Markets, Commissioner Ball on it. Um, and uh, it's proved to be effective as we're sort of seeing the, the boom in milk production and yogurt production. Uh, we want to see that the farms are given the resources necessary to keep the environment clean. And uh, the program has been working fairly well uh, to this point. Yeah, so thank you. And again, as we all know, dairy farmers continue to struggle with the price of milk. And the critical issue is incentivizing. So if right. we can reach the environmental goals and help our dairy farmers remain, uh, retain some profitability, I think we all want that. Uh, Commissioner, just quickly, on the uh, back to Catskill Park, if we could, on the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid, um, I, I do know that our, our, my colleagues in that region are looking to, for your help to establish a biocontrol initiative. And they're looking for funding um, to, to uh, put a, a, a beetle that preys on this uh, parasite mm -hmm. and control the deforestation that is likely going to occur in that region. Uh, so we're asking for your help. Uh, they, they've made a specific request. I know you have an invasive species all over the place, but this particular one is mirroring what I, I saw with the gypsy moth uh, episode years ago, deforesting uh, the whole region. So just want to draw your attention to that. Lastly, uh, we had some of our colleagues talk about rangers, uh, access of rangers in the, in the Adirondack Park. Catskill Park has needs for public safety. Yes. And just as a point of reference, I, I made recommendations in the past to look at, at access to uh, forested lands uh, for environmental thinning, other uh, select harvest. I know you folks work at it aggressively, but my only premise is if we can find a way to manage it sustainably, uh, perhaps we can also make sure it comes back to you for more foresters and for more rangers um, so that we can provide that safety and keep that resource moving. It has many benefits. So um, didn't know what, if you think you're at peak with that or if you think there might be some room to, to massage that. Well, I, I tell you, on the forest ranger side, we've, we've uh, worked hard in the last few years to, to uh, replenish their force. Um, we started out um, back in, uh, I guess, 2013, we had 111 uh, rangers. Um, and now, uh, as you know, we just got back-to-back -back classes. Last year, graduated a class. We have a class that started just yesterday. Um, when this class is completed, we expect to be up to 132. So we've actually built the Ranger Force back. Um, we've done the same thing with the ECO Force, uh, same, same type of uh, increase. So, I mean, I, I, I've, I've made it a priority. I mean, I think there's probably nothing more important we do on a going basis than the work of our Rangers and ECOs, because whenever they're in action, it's a life-saving situation. And we don't have time to think. We don't have time to plan. It's, we have time to act only. Yeah. Um, so, so we've been giving them everything they can. So my premise back to the, to the forested lands and opening them up more aggressively is twofold. One, we can generate revenue uh, to, to target to the department. Plus, if we move that product and we give yep. local, local uh, businesses access, uh, there's a multiplier effect throughout the throughout I fully the agree with you. And in, in fact, the last couple of years, I think, I think last year we actually hit a record on our uh, uh, on our harvesting from, from uh, state forest lands. Um, so we continue to, to increase those numbers and, and, and see better production out of our forests. Perfect. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you.